heavens declare the glory of God and the skies proclaim his handiwork. Welcome to worship on this beautiful evening. It's good to see all of you. Um, just a few housekeeping notes. Um, maybe you noticed in communications this week that the COVID response team from council uh, said that it is safe and okay if you'd like to take your face masks on while you're seated, um, that that's safe for you and those around you. So if you feel comfortable, feel free uh, while you're seated um, in your circle to take your face mask off. Um, we will be singing tonight, but when we do, please keep your face mask on for that. That's uh, just a safer approach. So uh, as we enter into worship together, um, let us quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship the living God. Make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. As the peace of Christ is with us, we are invited to share his peace with those around. Please stay within your circle and bow or wave or shout uh, to those in the distance uh, as we share the peace of Christ with one another. seated. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I call to you. When my heart is 
his feet. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me abide in your tent forever, find refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So I will always sing praises to your name as I pay my vows day after day. Jesus said, Loving God, you hear your people's cry. We turn to you for understanding, comfort, and help. We praise and thank you for your wisdom, your strength, and your unfailing love, made ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples spoke to him. Lord, he said, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, 
When you pray, this is what you should say. Father, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone who sins against us. Keep us from falling into sin when we are tempted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We had some printer issues, so we're just going from the laptop tonight, people. Hope that's okay. It's quite something to worship outside as we hear these sirens. Did you hear in the distance? A reminder that um, we don't worship to escape the world, um, but to be faithful in the world, um, to seek God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. When I hear these verses from Luke's gospel, my mind goes to my senior year in college. It was the last chapel service before graduation, and the chaplain shared about a conversation he had just had with a graduating senior. This young woman was um, at the top of the class. She was accepted in one of the best medical schools in the country. Add to that, she was kind and thoughtful, but she came to his office with one question she wanted answered. She asked, how do I pray? I admire her for asking that question. How do I pray? That might be the most important question any of us could ask. On the one hand, prayer is so familiar. (laughs) Maybe you're thinking, another sermon on the Lord's Prayer? Really? On the other hand, prayer is always the frontier of the soul. How do we pray? Well, in Luke's Gospel, by the time one of the disciples gets up the gumption to ask Jesus how to pray, they're already pretty deep into ministry together. Jesus has been healing people, teaching people, proclaiming the kingdom of God. And all the while, the disciples have been watching and listening. He's even sent them out to every town and place he himself intended to go. And they also proclaimed the kingdom and did works of healing After all this, one of the disciples says, Lord, teach us to pray. We can interpret this request in one of two ways. This disciple genuinely wants to know how to pray, that this request comes from a deep place in his heart. Or... The disciples become a bit envious of John's followers. He wants to keep up with the baptizers. He wants a prayer that will set him apart as a follower of Jesus from Nazareth. He wants a prayer that will mark him out as special, a badge of distinction. Or perhaps both of those desires exist within him. Perhaps he's caught between an earnest desire to grow in faith and a desire to be perceived as spiritually mature. Do those desires exist in us as well? Well, like their teacher, these disciples have been shaped by the daily prayers of Second Temple Judaism. They have prayed together every day, day in and day out. But these apprentices have watched their master not only pray the daily prayers, but also slip away on his own for long periods of solitude. They see that there's more to Jesus' life of prayer. Lord, teach us to pray. 
what might Jesus say? When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us today our daily bread. And as Jesus says these words, I wonder if the disciples are thinking, wait, when, when are you really going to teach us how to pray? Because every line Jesus says is an echo of prayers they already know. Oh, yep, that line is from the Amidah, the standing prayer. Yep, that bit is from the Shimonei Esrei, the 18 benedictions. Oh, I know that bit. He's borrowed that from the Kaddish, the holy prayer. Jesus isn't giving them some amazing new prayer. He's not inventing something new. And I wonder if the disciples feel a bit disappointed. Teach us to pray. Or perhaps as some of these familiar phrases wash over them, they realize that once again, Jesus is sifting the great tradition of their faith to find the gold. Perhaps they see that Jesus is once again distilling the essence of the faith of their ancestors, making these all too familiar words that they know day in and day out fresh again, that Jesus somehow delivers to them the heart of God in these words. And I want us to ask, can the familiar become fresh for us? One of Luke's key themes in his gospel is the disciple as a learner. So I suppose we have to ask ourselves, are we willing to be learners? Are we humble enough to ask for help? Are we hungry enough to be fed? The Trappist monk and mystic Thomas Merton says this about prayer. We do not want to be beginners at anything, but let us be convinced of this fact that we will never be anything but beginners all our life. If Merton can say that about prayer, perhaps so can we. Lord, teach us to pray. I want us to remember what Jesus' mission is, this mission that Jesus comes embodying and living out and proclaiming. It's the same mission he gives his disciples when he sends them out in pairs to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. Jesus has come to declare, to usher in, and to embody the reign of God on earth. Jesus has come to reconcile heaven and earth. And if we think of prayer as a meeting place between heaven and earth, a space in which we open ourselves to a union between what is heavenly and what is earthly, a way in which we can surrender our lives and will to the healing of the cosmos, Perhaps the familiar can be fresh again. So I've been trying to teach my son Asher how to pray. He's five and a half. Results have been varied. For a stretch there, he wanted to pray every night. He was ready and eager. But the past few months have been a dry spell for Asher. He doesn't want to utter a peep and he's content to just let me pray and be done with it. But we still hold hands. We lock our fingers together. And I've been thinking about that, fingers interlocking, how this is something children learn from such a lar uh, young age, watching their parents and others when they pray. Certainly, it's a convenient way to keep our hands still as we try to quiet our minds. 
but I think there might be more to unlock in the interlocking of fingers. Father, hallowed be your name. Jesus' prayer begins with an acknowledgement of a divine human relationship between a father and a beloved child, a father in heaven and a child on earth. A spiritual father has adopted children of the dust. And we now belong together, heaven and earth. Your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread. Luke gives us the lean cut of the Lord's prayer, no extras here. But heaven and earth are hidden in the words, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread. This petition is that the Lord's reign in heaven would come also on earth. And a sure sign of that is that people have food enough to eat. Bread from heaven was no metaphor for God's people in the wilderness. Our piety is in no way disconnected from the hunger of human beings, heaven and earth. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone indebted to us. In Luke's gospel, we see a Jesus who, sh who holds up the need for equality and justice in community. Jesus knows that debts of all kinds are barriers to building beloved community. Did you notice in the prayer, the language is not I, me, my, but us, we, our, our individual belonging to God is always within the context of a family of belonging. For Jesus, prayer is always personal, but never privatist. We are each other's keepers, as it was meant to be in the garden, when heaven and earth were one. And do not bring us to the time of trial. This final line in Jesus' prayer from Luke has an eschatological horizon. It points us ahead to that day of days, that time when all time will be gathered up, when the Lord will judge the earth. So we pray for salvation, deliverance. And in some ways, all our prayers are aimed at that day, aimed at its justice and peace and flourishing it's shalom, that day when there will be a new heaven and a new earth, when the home of God will once again be among mortals, when heaven and earth will be one forevermore. Lord, teach us to pray. Friends, the next time you bring your hands together in prayer, remember the heart of Jesus' mission. Remember that he came ushering in heaven on earth, and we share in his mission. May we surrender our lives afresh to this ministry of reconciliation, this ministry of healing. Lord, teach us to pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We will use the Lord's Prayer for the structure of our evening prayers. So I encourage you to follow in your liturgy uh, the response section on page five. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Lord, help us to really know you. Help us to bless, worship, and praise you for all your works. Help us to direct all our living so that your name will be never blasphemed because of us, but always honored and praised. Lord, we pray, your kingdom come. Rule us by your word and spirit and help us to submit to you. Keep your church strong and add to it. Destroy the devil's work. Destroy every force that revolts against you and every conspiracy against your word. Do this until your kingdom is complete and perfect. Lord, we pray, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Help us and all people to reject our own wills and to obey your will. Your will alone is good. Help us all to carry out the work that we are called to as willingly and faithfully as the angels in heaven. Lord, we pray, give us today our daily bread. Lord, take care of all our physical needs so that we learn that you are the only source of everything good and that neither our work and worry nor your gifts can do us any good without your blessing. And so help us to give up our trust in creatures and to put trust in you alone. Lord, we pray, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Because of Christ's blood, do not hold against us any of the sins that we do or the evil that constantly clings to us. Forgive us just as we are fully determined to forgive our neighbors as evidence of your grace in us. Lord, we pray, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. By ourselves, we are too weak to hold our own, even for a moment. And so, Lord, uphold us and make us strong with the strength of your Holy Spirit, so that we firmly resist the devil and all evil in this world. Lord, we pray, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We have made all these requests of you because you not only want to, but are able to give us all that is good. And because your holy name should receive all the praise forever. It is even more sure that you listen to our prayer than that we really desire what we pray for.
fit into temptation, but deliver us from Friends, please rise in body or spirit. As we leave this place tonight, uh, you are welcome to place an offering in the bowl on the table here on your way out uh, as a response to God's grace uh, in our lives. So we never give out of obligation, but out of joy and gratitude for what God has given to us. So in Thanksgiving, we now leave this place to serve our Lord Jesus Christ. O gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you. Through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we go, we go with God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord's countenance be lifted up to you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.